Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube! My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're bringing you our first look at the Italian cruiser line as we continue this series of videos with Tier 5's Raimondo Montecuccoli. So, now this ship is actually playable on PTS. Maybe you did get the chance to get over here and play her over the course of the weekend. There's always next weekend, next PTS session. But in the meantime, we'll talk through what is good and what isn't good about this particular ship. So let's start off with survivability. 26,500 hit points, right in the middle of the pack. Pretty much what you'd kind of expect to find on a Tier 5 light cruiser. And she is indeed a light cruiser. Armor scheme is very, very similar to that of Tier 4's Giosano with a 60mm belt here, a decent sized kind of void. She's got this spaced armor thing going on, and then a, uh, a, citadel, a, a citadel bulkhead inside of that. Now you see it's 30 millimeters up forward and back aft near the magazines, but all the way through her central section here, it's only 6 millimeters. So calling that a bulkhead, calling that armor is kind of not really a thing. That's a quarter inch plate, right? That's nothing. Uh, the roof there, 30 millimeters, so, you know, maybe maybe something, I, you know, AP bombs will probably still wreck that, but, um, well, there you go. Hopefully she can take, she can bounce some some shells at certain angles. Of course, you know, 13 millimeter extremities, you're not going to find a whole lot of armor here on a light cruiser at tier 5. Um, her handling is, is, uh, is pretty good, right? Uh, 37 knots is the second fastest tier 5 cruiser currently in the game. She does fall behind, uh, Tier 5 French cruiser Emile Bertin, which is not really shocking. Uh, she has pretty good concealment, 10.5 kilometers on the better side for the tier, but um, she's not really going to be sneaking up on anybody. <laughs> so that's not really surprising. Um, like Giussano before her, she mounts uh, four, double tur uh, four double turrets of the 152 millimeter barrels. Um, and also, like Juisano, the reload speed is horribly gimped. Yes, I realize that Emile Bertin also has a 13-second reload on the same diameter gun. But Emile Bertin also fires traditional HE shells and gets the ability to start fires and earn damage over time. This is a problem that Montecuccoli does not have. Um, firing these, uh, these uh, SAP shells right here, we can see we've got uh, 3850 for a damage, 42 millimeters of pin, and uh, a 14.9 kilometer range. Now for tier five, that range is not too shabby. I mean, it's better than some of the heavy cruisers that just hit this tier. I'm looking at you for Ataka. So the range is decent. Um, the shell velocity seems okay. So uh, again, when you put these when you put these uh, into the board, they're not they're not bad shells, but the reload speed feels really really bad because you have more range than something like Furutaka, but she has she hits way harder and and reloads almost as slowly. The torpedoes at this tier get noticeably better, with better alpha damage, uh, 10 kilometers of range, and a 47 second reload. So you always want to be looking for angles to dump these torpedoes into the water without torpedoing your teammates. Uh, the experience that I have playing with these, playing with this, the same kind of slow long range torpedoes we currently have on live with Duca d'Aosta and Abruzzi, has proven that smart use of these will absolutely surprise people. They'll come, they'll come when they aren't, they aren't expecting it, right? Um, still, she's only running double tube launchers, so she doesn't have a tremendous amount of firepower here. So that's kind of my point is, with the slow reload, you'd be maximizing this torpedo reload and put, just dumping these in the water every chance you get. Always be looking for angles, places you can put these out that aren't a threat to your team. A sweet, eh, pretty typical of the tier, right? Like it's um, it's okay. Her long range or is 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 awful. Her mid range or is average, and uh, well, her short range or is pretty average too. So there's not really anything to write home about here. Keep in mind that the AA values you're seeing here on public test are from the new AA system that was just announced last Friday, the 2nd of August. So we may not see these values show up anywhere else for a while. And you can't really compare these to anything else currently on the live server. So we're kind of back to this point where the AA system is in flux and we don't really know if this is any good or not. For consumables, of course, damage control party is standard fare, as is the choice between catapult fighter or spotting aircraft. This is going to become the sort of thing that you're going to see time and time again as you move up the line. The consumable that, that, that is new here is the full throttle smoke generator. This is a brand new consumable de 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 debuting, let's say, on the Italian cruiser line. So let's, let's talk about how this works. 
It is very, very similar to the creeping smoke that you find on Perth and Haida in that it issues puffs every few seconds while you continue to move within the cloud. The difference here is that this version of the smoke does not care what speed you're moving. If you've played Perth or Haida, you know that you have to move uh, very, very slowly, like one quarter speed. As the name here would imply, full throttle smoke generator, you can actually deploy this smoke at full speed and literally go dark, become invisible, uh, become you know, break detection at full speed while you turn, change angles, whatever else. Now, you can see there it has a very, very short duration, only 25 seconds, and a very, very long reload time. Nearly should be about three minutes, although if I'm reading that right, that might actually be closer to four minutes. So it is a very, very long cooldown on this. Um, now, there's some caveats to using this stuff. Of course, we talked about the long cooldown. We talked about the short duration. The other thing is that aside from Montecuccoli here, uh, the, the, the ships that as you go up the tier have much larger caliber guns. And if you, want to, if you choose to fire from within that smoke, well, that might not work out for everybody. Uh, you can see here she has only a 5.5 kilometer detection when firing from within that little self-generated smoke cloud. So if you know that there's not a destroyer that close to you, you can probably get away with it. But let's just let's just gently look at uh, Toronto here. Trento here, 8.7 detection while firing from within smoke. And it probably only gets worse as you go further up the line. So what I'm getting at is this is not a get out of jail free card for an off for someone playing their cruiser offensively. Um, you really, really have to be paying attention <laughs> and uh, if you want to continue to fire your guns while you have this thing online. The optimal use, what I think you're going to see this mostly used for, is disengaging. I can, I can pop this, turn my whole cruiser in a different direction, uh, essentially you know, flashing my broadside at the whole enemy team, but they can't see me now because of my smoke cloud. And then once I've gotten on whatever new course I want to be on, the smoke will evaporate and I can continue moving, moving in my new direction without having to, to you know, show, show my broadside to everybody. I'm confident players, though, will find new and fun and innovative ways to use it that we haven't thought of yet. Anyway, guys, there you go. Quick look at Tier 5's Montecuccoli. I'll have videos for Trento and the rest of the line up very shortly, so stay tuned. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you next time.